Hi everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'll explain how easy it is to add the Sync Fusion Blazor heatmap chart component to a Blazor WebAssembly application. Here, you can see a heatmap component that depicts a summary of sales revenue achieved by the employees in a week. Based on the values, each rectangular box is represented with a gradient or solid color variations. I will show you how to implement this and configure a few of its basic features like plotting data points, bubble heat map chart, axis, palette, dimensions, and tooltip. Let me start with the application creation process. A Blazor application can be created using Visual Studio 2019 or 2022, Visual Studio Code, or JetBrains Writer. In this video, I'll show you how to create a Blazor WebAssembly application using Visual Studio 2022. Make sure that you have installed compatible SDK versions like the .NET Core SDK 3.1.8, .NET 5.0 SDK, or .NET Core 6.0 SDK. I open Visual Studio 2022 and choose Create a new project from the dashboard. Then, I choose the Blazor WebAssembly app and click the Next button. I name my project, click Next. Then, I select .NET Core 6.0 as the target framework and click the Create button. The project has been created and is ready to use. Now, I will show you the step-by-step -step process for adding the heatmap chart component to this project. First, I need to install the SyncFusion.Blazor.Heatmap package to work with the heatmap chart component. To do that, I'll open the NuGet Package Manager, search for the package, and install it in my application. Once installed, you can see the package added to this application's Packages folder. Then, I navigate to the underscore imports.razor page and import the syncfusion.blazor.heatmap namespace. Next, I navigate to the index.html page within the root folder to add a Syncfusion Bootstrap 5 CSS reference from the installed package. Then, I need to register the Syncfusion Blazor services. In the program.cs file, I import the Syncfusion.blazor namespace and register the Syncfusion Blazor service using the at Syncfusion Blazor method. I also need to register the license using the Syncfusion. Licensing.Syncfusion license provider dot register license method to avoid the license validation message. If you want to know more about the Blazor WebAssembly app and how to add Syncfusion components to it, you can check out the video linked in the card above. The configuration steps are done, so let's move on to adding the Blazor heatmap chart component. I open the index.razor and add the SF heatmap tag. To visualize the heatmap chart in the browser page, I plot data to it using the data adapter support. Data can be bound to the heat map chart using the data source property. In at code function, define the method default data of type two dimensional integer array. I declare the variable data source and assign values and return this variable. These values are the sales revenue of items sold by the employees in a week. This represents the summary of sales revenue achieved by a single employee in a week. I declare the public variable heat map data of type object. I define the uninitialized method and assign the default data method to the heat map data variable. Then, I assign this variable to the data source property of the heat map chart. Let me run this example and show you the basic heat map chart with no labels. Looking at the output, the heat map chart is rendered with the sales revenue data where the revenue for the day is displayed in thousands of USD as cell data. Here the first object in the data source is rendered like this. In the same way other objects will be rendered. I can also have null values here. The data points that are null are considered empty points. See here, default palettes are rendered for the data points with null values. Next, I will show you how to add a title to the heat map chart. I set the title by adding the heat map title settings property and set text property value as the sales revenue per employee in 1000 US dollars. Now in the output, the chart renders with the title. 
Next, I will show you how to set the X and Y axis labels in the heat map chart. You can set three types of axes, category, numeric, and date time. In this example, I am going to add the category axis first. If you want to know about other axis types, refer to the UG link below. I declare the variable X labels of type string array and define the array values. I then declare the Y labels variable with array values. I assign the X labels variable to the labels property of the heat map X axis tag. Assign the Y labels variable to the labels property of the heat map Y axis tags. Add value type property and set its value as category. Looking at the output, the heat map chart renders with category labels in the X and Y axes. Data points representing the data source values are displayed with gradient or fixed colors in the heat map chart. I will show you how to change the palette types. Here, I include the heat map palette settings tag and set gradient as the type property value. Include the heat map palettes tag. Then include the heat map palette tag and specify the color value using the color property. In the same way, I define two more colors. For the gradient palette type, the heat map calculates all the gradient colors between the start and end colors for all distinct data values. A default start color and end color will be considered for gradient calculation if the colors are not defined. Looking at the output, the heat map chart renders with the gradient palette type. In the fixed palette type, solid colors are applied to the heat map cells. The data values can be grouped based on the number of colors defined for the heat map. The palette type should be defined as fixed for the type property in the heat map palette settings property. See in the output, the heat map chart rendered with the fixed palette type. Next, I will show you how to render a bubble heat map. The data points can be represented by bubbles along with their attributes by setting the tile type property to bubble inside the heat map cell settings tag. Data points can be displayed as bubble sizes, bubble colors, or sectors. I will include the bubble type property and set its value to size. In the output, a bubble chart renders with the bubble size type. The size of the bubble is displayed based on the data point values assigned through data source. Next, I will show you how to set dimensions for a heat map chart. I can specify a dimension in pixels or in a percentage. Here, I set the height to 350 pixels and width to 750 pixels in the SF heat map tag. For this demo, I change back the tile type to rectangle. Looking at the output, the heat map chart rendered based on the dimensions specified. Next, I will show you how to format values in the heat map chart cells. I will include the format property in the heat map cell settings tag and apply dollar to the cell value. See in the output, the currency format is applied to heat map chart cell data. Finally, I'll show you how to enable or disable tooltip in a heat map chart. By default, tooltip is displayed while hovering the cursor over the cell. To disable it, include heat map tooltip settings tag and set the enable property value to false. And in the output, a tooltip is disabled in the heat map chart. In this video, I have shown you how to create a Blazor web assembly application, add a heat map chart component to it, and then configure a few of its basic features. You can download the working example from this video in the GitHub link in the description below. You can also see if you're eligible for our community license, which will provide you a free license key to use our products. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel.